All right, side one is complete, other than finishing it with some varnish or some resin and adding a little more detail to my star, but for now, I'm happy with it. So we are going to switch to the other side now. This side is going to be the empty tomb, and I really, really don't have any idea how I'm gonna do this. This is just gonna be a wing it as we go kind of thing. I do want it to look a bit like a sunrise. I feel like we've got that vibe kind of going. Love my little gold glimmers in there. When you add some varnish to metallic, it really makes it pop. So I'm gonna get my burnt sienna open. I should have done that before I started the video, sorry. I kind of want this one to be a little different than the last side. So I don't know, that always makes me happy when I can just do something unexpected. So one side has a very specific style and then on the other side, it's gonna look very, very different. So I have my same detail brush uh, that I will use, but I'm going to start, I think, with my angle brush. So I want the, the empty tomb to be here, and it, it, in a lot of depictions, it's like a cave. So that's what I'm gonna do. It's gonna look kind of like a cave. And I want it to cover up part of the yellow there. So we just kind of have to decide. My battery's dying, guys. I'm gonna have to plug this in. So we just kind of make a decision. Where is your cave gonna be? This is just burnt sienna that I'm using as my color here. And I don't think I'm gonna let this little cave end. It's just gonna go right off the edge of the, or right up to the edge of the ornament. And I'm just filling this in with brown. We'll add some detail as we go, but I wanna get the basic shape of it in first. So I think we're gonna add some trees over here, some green here. I want it to feel very spring-like. Easter, we always celebrate Easter in the spring. I'm not sure how accurate that is, but I wanna make it look springy. So I'm going to take, I'm just testing my palette to make sure that my blues are dry so I can mix some more paint there. I'm gonna get some brown and some white so I can lighten up my brown. I really want it quite a bit lighter. Am I even, oh, I'm out of yellow. I'm gonna add just a touch of yellow to it. This lemon yellow is nice and bright and vibrant. I wanna add a little path, just a drop, a lemon drop. <laughs> All right. Boy, holding this in one hand makes it difficult to get everything done with the other. Okay. So let's mix this in. So we'll kind of have this bright brown, yellow brown color. Okay, but I'm gonna switch brushes. And I'm sure this is not gonna be super accurate. Well, who knows? I wasn't there, so of course it's not gonna be accurate, but even compared to other artistic um, interpretations. You know, I think we're just gonna do a little path. It probably needs to be a little bit bigger than that, but. It's gonna go right up to the tomb. I doubt there were paths back then that led to tombs, but you know, what do I know? I could be completely wrong. All right, I think that's looking pretty good. I feel like I need a second palette, guys, or maybe I should just clean my palette. That might be good too. All right, I am going to add some black. Now let's see, we gotta do, I'm making decisions. So this is gonna be where the stone should have been. Cause this is like, Christmas is so, so wonderful. But I think the best part is that it's not just that Jesus came, but that he died and rose again so that we could be with him in heaven one day. So that's why I wanted to do a two-sided ornament because it's a lot more than just Jesus being born that's, that makes Christmas so very, very special. So. I'm holding my breath. Trying to do this right. All right, 
right, I think that looks okay. So now we're just gonna add some some details to the rock. It's gotta be it's gotta be rock looking, which means we gotta have some deeper sections and some lighter sections. Ooh, and that went up to the red. Let's see if I can get that. That's a little better. I might have to touch that up a little bit later, but that's okay. Or maybe I'll just add a little bit of a bump there. And this is just paint what you're feeling. Paint where you feel it needs paint. Okay, so now I gotta add the stone. So I'm gonna take some of my burnt sienna and some of my black. And we're gonna add a stone right here. Ooh, that's not got enough black in it. That's too similar. All right. This big old heavy stone. I don't know why it's always round. Isn't that funny? Maybe because then it would be easier to roll and so we assume it was round. I don't know. Deep theological question there, I guess. All right. Okay. Just adding some black shadow. And this paint is still really wet, so I might let that dry a minute. I do want to, with my little detail brush, go into my white. I have that pearl white, lovely, lovely pearl white. And we're just going to add some little highlights. Again, making sure we're using our very best brush. And just wherever you feel like it needs a little something. It'll give it more of a three-dimensional look. I'm not looking for super detailed, but I do want it to look like I put some time and thought and energy into it. And I didn't just throw paint on it and call it good. I feel like this would be a really good one for the palette knife, but I am not experienced enough with a palette knife to feel confident enough. There we go. Nice highlight on this rock, and maybe add a couple other little spots. If you get too dark, no worries. Go into your burnt sienna and just touch it up, just like that. some black now just to get that third dimension going so just keep layering until you feel like yes that looks like a cave I'm going to do a little bit similar thing here with the path we're just gonna a very watery paint I, well, I should say a very wet brush and yeah, the problem with that is that it does tend to flow wherever it can flow. So let me just clean that up a little bit. Same thing there. Yeah, my brush was a little too wet. So I dried it off on my paper towel and we'll just try again. I'm going to add some green in there anyways. So this is still a little wet. Adding some black edging here. I kind of did my dark spot the wrong way, so we'll fix that. The darker side should be farthest from the sun. I really feel like I could paint these ornaments all day long. I'm really enjoying it. So hopefully this is a fun assignment for you too. All right, I'm going to add some white over here, and I might have to pick up some more of that burnt sienna to blend it in because I really don't want it to look white. We're going to need 
need to bring that burnt sienna down towards the black though for sure. So let's do that first. After I was so careful to mix up a different color for the path, I just went right back to that burnt sienna. That's okay. I think what I want to do is we'll add some more detail to the path, but then I think we'll add some of that lemon yellow just as a highlight here and there, like the sun's hitting it just the right way. Oh, let's see, we'll get a little pearl white, a little bit of burnt sienna. Let's see if we can't make this work. So if you pour out, when you put your paint into your palette, you really want to do much less than you think you'll need because it's really hard to save it once once it's on the palette because it gets mixed with your other colors or if I mean at least if you do it like I do so keep that in mind you can always put a little more on your palette if you start to run low but it's hard to take it back once it's there so it's really wet again It's looking pretty good, I think. And again on this, I will probably go in and add some detail work with my pens. So you can always do that. It's always an option. Pick up a little more black. I want this right here to be well defined really have some shading going on there. Try that again. My brush was a little still still a little wet so and when I, I'm probably doing that off camera I'm wiping my brush on my paper towel to get rid of the excess paint as well as any excess moisture. So now I'm just coming with kind of a semi-dry brush and blending all right, I'm going to let that dry and let's add some green. I'm going to put both light green and phthalo green on my palette. I'm leaning more towards light green because it's spring and light green says spring to me. Oh, I'm going to spill it all on my finger first. Okay. So a little blob of that. Thalo, which is again a real deep color. This is Thalo green, so obviously not quite the same as Thalo blue, but they're both very deep colors. So let's see, we're going to start with our light green. And I just, I don't really want to cover up all that gold, so um, I might just try tapping it. Am I in frame? I'm sorry, guys. I'm trying. Hopefully you can see enough of this to get the gist. Just going to tap it in. You could also do this with your detail brush, especially for these places right next to the path and the tree, or the tree, the stone, but I don't mind doing it this way. And you, you can turn your brush different ways so you'll get different little marks so it doesn't look too uniform. We want it to look cohesive, but not completely uniform, if that makes sense. All right, so let's add over here. I'm going to start down here so that because I could tell I could tell I had too much paint so yep I could see myself doing lots and lots of these they are a lot of fun and you could do them all so differently all right and you know what I think I am going to let this kind of come down a little 
rather than being a straight line across the ornament. Just let it, let it kind of look like a hill. All right, I'm not gonna clean my brush, I almost did, but I think I'm going to wait and we're gonna go into that phthalo green and just get a little bit on your brush and you're gonna start adding some darker spots now. I'm gonna start up by the, the, the cave. Goodness sakes, guys, I really can't think. I'm just tapping it in. Kind of move that brush different directions so you get different lines, like that right there is very uh, similar. So I'm just gonna break it up with a little bit of the light green. Then I'm gonna go back into the phthalo. We're gonna tap that in right there. Away from this angle, it almost looks blue. Kind of want to cover up some of that orange down here, so I'm just adding little, little touches here and there. Just tap, tap, tap. Holding the brush straight, perpendicular to the little ornament. And again, I'm getting a little bit too uniform. So we will just add, just keep going back and forth between the two colors. It'll add a lot of texture and detail and I think it'll look lovely. So just keep tapping until you feel like, yep, that's what it should look like. If this is your painting, your ornament, do it the way you like. I apologize, this is gonna be a very long video. Maybe watch it on double speed. So now we are going to do the really fun lemon yellow highlights. And then I may have to take a quick break to find a charger for my camera. And maybe eat. Take an eating break while my phone charges for you. Okay, so just with my little detail brush, I'm going into just the lemon yellow. And we're just going to add, I'm testing it on my hand to make sure that it's not too much paint and not too wet. So I'm gonna add little highlights on both the walking path I might have to add a little bit of white to that. I'm going to do the pearl white. And that got a little bit too yellow. So if it happens again, don't, don't stress. We'll just go back into our burnt sienna. And cover a little bit of it up. No biggie. All right, back into the lemon yellow. The lemon yellow, when you're doing highlights in the grass, you can really get away with just leaving it yellow. But you know what? I think we'll make this even better. Let's use our angle brush and do the same tapping that we did before. Otherwise, it's going to look like little flowers, which I don't hate, but that's not what I'm going for yet. We'll get there. And see how that just makes it pop a little more? That's what we're looking for. And there's going to be a lot of it right here because the sun is shining on it, and then less as we get further away. Trying to break up those lines a little bit. I might throw a little bit of light green on just to break that up just a touch. All right. Oh my goodness, guys, I'm loving this. Okay, we are going to take a break and we will come back. I'm going to hang this up. Don't set it down. Side one, side two is coming along so nice. I'm so excited. Can't wait to see this done and I will probably hang it on my tree because sometimes I'm selfish like that but <laughs> there we go look at that guys oh my goodness all right I'll be back in a bit all right I got a little quick bite to eat let this dry for a bit and we can jump back in I'm really really liking this so far 
I think there's some little details we could add. Um, over here, there could be some darker spots in the grass, so let's just start with that. I'm trying to make sure I don't have too much water on my paint, but this paint has been sitting for a little bit, so it might need to be just re-moistened a bit. I'm just kind of trying to do little tiny dots and squiggles, just a little more contrast. I almost feel like you could add some black in here and get away with it. Let's try just a touch. Okay, and now let's get our phthalo green again and just kind of go over those spots. It'll be a very nice deep green, which will add some really nice contrast. Remember, black goes a long way, so if you get it too deep, feel free to add a little more green to it. There's always going to be areas of shadow and shade, no matter where you are. Well, I, that's probably not true. I'm sure there are places where there, the sun is so bright you just can't see anything else. I really was going to move on to the next step, but I felt like this needed just a little bit more attention. A little more contrast. And I went a little bit far, so let's just brighten that up a little bit. There's the tiniest bit of highlights in here. It just really gives a lot of depth. Okay, you could do that all day long, but I'm going to stop. We are going to switch gears. I want to add a pine tree over here just to kind of balance out the weight of the cave here with something on that side. So we're going to go into our burnt sienna. I'm double checking to make sure that is the color I'm using. Yes, burnt sienna. I feel like I got a little bit too much moisture on my brush, so just tap it off. And let's put it right here. Just putting in a trunk for my tree. Okay. Not too worried about the detail at this point. We are just, just getting going here. So we are going to need a little more light green. And I'm going to hold off. We'll probably need more phthalo green, but I'm going to wait just a minute. We'll start with a light green and probably add some of that lovely lemon yellow in there. Oh, sorry. Goodness, I really bumped the camera that time. All right, so with your angled brush again, go into that light green. At this point, just light green, nothing else. And we're just going to tap in our tree. And I'd like to see a little bit of that trunk at the base there, so I'm going to let that stay and I'm just going to tap up the tree you have a little more paint on your brush for this than you did for the grass because this is one where you don't really want to go over it too many times all right let's get this other side you're going to try to match the angle going the other way you notice I'm going back and forth. Oh goodness, I didn't angle it enough there. It's okay, we're gonna, we're gonna keep working with this. This might be easier with a smaller angle brush. Let me see if I've got one. Here we go. I'm going to go into that phthalo green and the light green now, and just start building this tree a little bit more. And just keep loading your brush anytime it feels like you're running out of paint. Don't let that happen. Go ahead and get a little more on your brush. All right. 
right, we're getting there. I think we're gonna just extend this top just a little bit, just cause the, my right side there just wasn't looking right. Okay, let's get a little more phthalo green. And you notice I'm trying intentionally to make some of the branches stick out further than others. Most pine trees do not grow perfectly. There's gonna be some variation in there. And now I'm just going in along where the branch is, the trunk of the tree, and just adding in some depth. I don't want much of that to show through. I don't want much of the orange to th show through. So go back and just tap in some branches, any place where there's too much of the background showing through. And remember that not all the branches are going to grow exactly the same direction. You might have some occasionally that are turned funny. Okay, so let's go into our little lemon yellow here. And we're going to start on the side where the sun is because there's definitely going to be some highlights over there where the sun is just kind of coming in from behind it and really making those branches shine. Yellow is not a color you would normally necessarily think about seeing on a pine tree, but you can see when you're painting, it really does add quite a bit of depth. So now I'm going to add a little bit of light green and yellow together. And come along this other side just to add some little highlights here and there. It doesn't need to be quite as much as on the other side. I don't like that last one I did. Lost my tippy top again. Gotta keep adding to it, that's okay. This is like the tallest, craziest looking tree ever. That's okay, we'll fix it. A little happy accidents maybe along the way. All right, so now we are going to clean out your brush thoroughly. And we're gonna add some detail with our liner brush. So I went into my black and you know I'm seeing something that needs green so I'm gonna clean out my brush, get some yellow, get some green, see what we can get going here. I'm just trying to define the top of this tree just a little bit more. It's a lot of paint on such a little brush but it's okay we'll clean it off on my hand. Just trying to give this a little better shape, a little more recognizable shape maybe. Add a little bit of that dark green in there to give it some contrast. Okay. And then we're going to go back into our black, which I put way too much in my palette there. But so we're going to go and we're just going to add like peeking through little sections where you can see the base. So I did that in black, and now I'm going to go into my Burnt Sienna and add just a touch to that as well. Okay. Going back into my black now. And we're just going to add a darker side to this pine tree. We don't want it to all be bland in one color. We want it to look textured like the trunk of a tree. So. And then we're going to make a little bit of a, well, no, let's just do a dark green. So we're going to go into the phthalo green. And at the base of this tree, we're just going to add a shadow. So we need darker around the base of the tree because the sun is coming this way. And you just wouldn't have a whole lot of highlights there. So that'll kind of give your place, give your tree a place to sit rather than just floating. Okay, all right, 
I am really, really liking this. So one, I'm gonna put these brushes away. One more little bit to do. Two steps, but one little bit. All right, one last step. I've got my little bits of gold on there. I added some to the tomb as well. So we're gonna add He is Risen. There we go. All right. Thanks for hanging with me. This was a really long one, but it was so much fun. I hope you enjoyed it as well. And I will see you on the next one.